Not sure how to protect yourself against the fear of the coronavirus? By the end of this video, you will know exactly what to do to protect yourself against corona and any other form of virus or external threat so that you never allow fear to destroy you again. My name is Rosanna and I teach people to align with their greatest version of themselves so they can live their true life purpose and also the difference between manifesting and co-creating. So if this resonates with you, why not hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you always know when I bring a video out every Friday. I am devoted to the path of divine grace which allows all of us to have what we desire and it is my passion to share with you all of the secrets of living as a divine human on this earth at this time. I am here to help you co-create your personal paradise. My clients learn with me the tools that they need to stay in a high vibration during fearful and challenging times so that instead of being gripped by fear, they learn to transmute fear, just like you could learn to do. As a multidimensional coach, I watch one person after another have breakthrough after breakthrough as they learn to co-create their reality and live in alignment with their higher selves. So in order to prevent fear gripping us regarding the coronavirus, let's actually look at what's going on at this point in time in terms of alternative and mainstream narratives around the coronavirus. So at the moment, the conspiracy rumors that I am aware of, and I only spent a little bit of time checking this out, but my goodness, did my vibration drop. First of all, the link to the 5G network, okay? So one of the conspiracy rumors out there is the fact that the coronavirus has spread in an area where 5G was first activated fully, which is Wuhan. And the idea is that there is a link with the lowering of the uh, immune system as a result of the 5G technology that is making us more susceptible to viruses like the coronavirus. So this is one aspect. The second one is that Bill Gates apparently has both created the coronavirus and the vaccine to tackle the coronavirus. And there's quite a lot of information out there, whether it's true or not, about how there's been some uh, practice runs around this uh, and actually how to cope with these pandemics because this was going to be set in motion. I'm not saying it's true, just saying what I've seen. Thirdly, I've heard that it's chemical warfare, so this has been created in a lab and it is to destroy big levels of our population because we're overpopulated. And then there's also the rumors around the over and under um, estimation of the figures. So, you know, we haven't really had any figures yet from India, for example. So the question is, are we suppressing, are countries suppressing how many people have actually got the, the virus or are they inflating how many people have got the virus? So this sensationalism around the media, whether it's mainstream or alternative, is definitely fear-based. Who can we trust? Who can we believe? So the second thing that we want to consider as we allow ourselves to move from fear making our decisions around this whole coronavirus is to look at the standard narrative, which is the mainstream narrative, which is what you're going to be getting through the news, through the radio stations, through public health um, disclosures, uh, even fact checking charities are out there looking to dispel the myths of the um, conspiracy rumors. And at the moment, the standard narrative is that there is no connection with 5G. Um, there is no connection with Bill Gates, um, that this is purely the result of um, a particular virus, particular strain skipping species. So it's actually gone from bats to humans. And so we don't have a natural uh, immunity against it. Okay. But what's very interesting is when you look at these fact checking charities, and I'm not going to go into the details of them, the people that are behind them are actually journalists from mainstream media. So you've got to ask the question, where is the interest here? What is the vested interest? Now, if a public health official will say to you, there is no link with 5G, there is no compelling evidence for the fact that 5G will lower our immune system. Um, there is no uh, potential link with any of the things that we would say, let's look at this in a different way. Then we're being moved towards the fact that the mainstream media is sensationalizing the stories in order to get more people tuned in. Now what's happening with that is it's getting more people into a state of fear. Okay, so I've noticed that when I'm reading articles online, at the bottom of the article, whichever um, body is looking for more information will say, do you have a story about the coronavirus? Please get in touch with us. Can we get in touch with you? And so this is just building the profile, whether it's 
famous people that have got it, um, whether another person has died from it, where it's actually spread to. So we have to ask the question, is the role of the mainstream media just to report, 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 or do we want to get factual information out there that is going to help people prevent the outbreak or the spreading of a virus like this, and also to pacify people to put things in perspective, which is what I'm going to be talking about with you later in this video. So um, sensationalist news always has an agenda, okay? It's either to increase ratings, to sell more newspapers. So there's a hell of a lot out there in the mainstream media that's based on this could happen rather than this is happening. What does that do? It puts us in a state of imagining something that hasn't happened yet and therefore energizing it as a potential reality in our physical experience. What we focus on grows. So why on earth would we focus on fearful outcomes? We want to be very, very aware of this and I want you to start thinking about this when you listen to any kind of coverage of what's going on. So we've mentioned that they're looking for stories and then there's also a sense of spreading mistrust. So I can talk from England only, but what I can say to you is I've seen stories where um, local news has basically challenged the way that um, places have been cleaned up. They've, they've sent photos in of the people that apparently were sanitizing um, the, the surgeries that had been had infections within them. And they were saying this isn't even a proper suit for being able to do any kind of infection control. So is it just to sort of pacify people that something's being done even if it's being done badly also I've seen stories that claim that people have waited four days to hear back from a doctor or to hear back from public health with advice on what to do because they have a suspected case of the virus so you know the whole thing about this is it's just spreading mistrust you're criticizing the officials then you're looking at what the standard narrative is and, and you're working with it. You've got the governments, you've got the public health, you've got um, pharmaceutical companies, let's say. I mean, where is this going to be something that people capitalize on? What are the stocks and shares that are going down? What are the stocks and shares that are going up? You, you have to look at this as an economic thing, not just a health thing, because people are going into fear and so they're stockpiling and so they're you know, looking to get their hands on things and they're feeling like on their own they're not strong enough. So just remember this, there are lots of things we can do to protect ourselves and I'll go into that later. At the moment, I want you just to be very aware of what you're listening to and how you're interpreting it. Okay, so in order to dispel fear, we're now gonna look at some actual facts. And I want to introduce to you my wonderful acupuncturist, who is a guy by the name of Dave Bennett. And he sent this out to all of his therapists. And I just wanna read a little bit about him so you know his credibility before we go into the stats. Um, his original qualification is a degree in applied biology from Imperial College London. So he's always been very nerdy when it comes to things like epidemiology of emerging diseases. Um, he's followed previous outbreaks of SARS, MERS, Ebola with avid reading. And um, he has noticed that there's notoriously bad um, reporting of all of these things in terms of the media, in terms of uh, actually understanding the science. So journalists are not scientists, you've really got to remember that. Now this man is a phenomenal acupuncturist, I've been going to him for years and I find it's very very interesting what he's actually come up with. So let's look at the RO which is the measure of infectivity of certain viruses and in particular we have here the winter flu. So there's a little bit of a misconception that I want to clear up which is news to me as well, um, which is people believe that you're more likely to die from the winter flu than the COVID-19 um, virus, which is corona. Uh, but actually, what it is said is for every one person that's infected with winter flu, normal winter flu from anywhere in the world, I know there's lots of different strains, um, they're likely to infect one other person, okay? Now with COVID-19, which is corona, that it's more like 2.2. So for every one person who's infected, they're likely to affect another two people. Now there's been this estimated figure of between one and 6.6, .6, but actually they think it's about 2.2 at this current time whilst I'm making this video. Again, to put things in perspective, you have measles. For every one person who's got measles, they're likely to infect 12 to 18 other people, right? So it's highly contagious. And Ebola is actually two people on the basis that it kills very, very quickly. So you're likely to be killed by it before you can actually infect another person. So this is all very important, as is how is this particular virus transmitted? And it is transmitted through droplets. It's not airborne. You have to sneeze on someone or you need to pass some kind of your fluid onto another person in order for you to be able to get it. So it's very important to remember this when people are going into panic about being in public places and actually wearing masks that do nothing um, to actually protect anyone because all you're doing is you're just breathing your, your own um, 
you're at your own breath back to yourself, okay? But you're still around and you're still exposed. So if someone else touches something that had their liquid on and then you touch it and you put your hands on your eyes, you're still at risk of infection, if that makes sense. Okay, so we now wanna look at the current statistics we actually have around the flu, the normal winter flu, which obviously different strains from all around the world, but overall the flu, and uh, COVID-19, which is corona, and the mortality rate. So at the moment, to put things in perspective, 79,000 people have been reported to have been infected in China with the coronavirus. Now, if you took just the population of Wuhan, okay, which has an estimated 11 million population, and you put all of those 79,000 people in Wuhan, that would still only represent 0.7% of the population. I just wanna get this really, really clear for you. So 0.7% of the population reported as infected, which means 99.3% either aren't or have symptoms so mild that they're not being reported, okay? So this isn't the death rate, this is just the infection rate with the coronavirus, okay? So when you actually look at it like that, it's less than 1% of the population of, that, of the area of Wuhan has been affected by the coronavirus. It's really important to look at it this way. Um, and also to kind of understand a little bit more about the mortality rates, but I'll get there in a sec. Let's just talk about this. So. Our usual annual winter flu is estimated to infect around 1 billion people and to kill 350,000 to 650,000 people a year globally, um, with an additional 3, 3 to 5 million with moderate to severe respiratory um, problems, depending on the severity of the virus and the way that it's measured. So the current misconception around corona is that it's less deadly than the winter flu, and that's not actually true, and here's why. Um, the report, that reporting is based on the absolute numbers historically recorded with winter flu versus the emerging coronavirus, which is still dynamic. With the current mortality rate of between 1% and 2%, COVID-19 has been estimated as having the potential to cause 10% more deaths than winter flu. But again, if you actually look at it, in flu, you've got 1% to 2% of people who actually get flu. Uh, may potentially die from it, okay? So it's, it's still it's really quite low. And then potentially 10% more than that would be at risk with the coronavirus. But again, you've got to think about the people that are most at risk, which are the over 80s at the moment with pre-existing conditions. And even within that sample of the population, and please don't think that I'm marginalizing death because obviously losing a loved one is, is awful and we want to prevent that as much as we can. But ultimately, when you look at the percentages you have to ask the question, is it worth the hype and the fear that is being created in the world at the moment? With something that seems to be, it's the unknown that is scaring people. So if you're over 80 and infected with COVID-19, your chance of dying is 14.8%, which implies 85.2% of people in this group will recover. So most people in the over 80s are going to recover from the coronavirus, right? Put that in perspective. If you're 50 to 60 years old, you have a 1.3% chance of dying. And if you're under 40, the chance is 0.2%. So 99.8% of people who get infected in this group will recover. So is this a reason to not leave your house? Is this a reason to stockpile loads of food? Is this a reason to be terrified to go and enjoy your life? Go to work, get on with things, or can you actually do other things to actually support you to boost your whole immune system? So instead of being scared of one particular thing threatening you, you boost all of you. You use this as an opportunity to move out of fear into empowerment, and that's why I'm making this video. Okay, so just a couple more things to put things in perspective. The Spanish flu of 1918 killed 50 million people. That was a huge pandemic, okay, 1918, 50 million people. Now, if you put that in the context of our current flu, and we're talking about between 350 to 650,000 people die a year, that's a one to two percent rate of the one billion that are infected, that was a lot higher, right? So that was scary. Now, swine flu, when that hit us in 2009, the media were reporting, and this is why you have to be careful, that some 65,000 people would die of swine flu. Okay, I just want to double check this. 65,000 people would die of swine flu. The actual number was 360 people. 
okay? And these are from the high risk people. We're talking here, the people that are in the high risk bracket. So is it worth this? Look at how much stress is being caused. When you actually sensationalize something and suggest it could be this bad, it could be this bad, but it probably won't be. And this is the actual hard fact. Right? It's not worth staying at home. It's not worth all of the hype that's going on where people are canceling their holidays, they're not going to work, they're working from home, terrified to breathe the air around them. Come on, there are things we can do here beyond being in total fear, okay? So just to put this again in a little bit more um, perspective, and this is actually about our worldwide data. So this has come from worldwide data. Every week there are globally around 344,000 deaths from cardiovascular disease, 182,000 deaths from cancers, and 26,000 deaths from diabetes, and over 15,000 suicides. There are currently less than 3,000 deaths in China since COVID-19 first emerged towards the end of 2019. Perspective. Okay, so please do comment below and let us know what your current narrative is regarding the coronavirus so we can shift it around. So now we get into the meaty stuff, which is about the prevention of, of actually being infected by the illness, by the virus. So what can you actually do? And this is about understanding fear, all right? So what does fear stand for? It stands for false emotion or false evidence or false expectation appearing real. I've already just given you the example of the way that the media is sensationalizing this whole thing and misreporting it, you could say. So the question is, what does fear do actually do to us? Well, when we perceive a threat we go into a certain response in our nervous system which is the fight or flight response it's the sympathetic nervous system which is seeking to get us to either flee or to fight okay and if we don't feel like we have either of those options then we get into a state where we play dead which is freezing okay and that's that when you're so frightened the stunned rabbit look you don't know what to do most of us will fight or try and run away from it so what can you actually do well what actually happens when you are in a state of high stress which when you are in fear you're in high stress your blood is no longer working to help to support your cells to repair for you to be in a state where everything's working optimally instead your blood goes to your extremities and to your heart and to your brain just so you can get out of danger as quickly as possible and what that does over time is it costs your immune system so you actually lower your immune system by being in fear now this is so important because your brain cannot tell the difference between what is real and what is imagined so if you're imagining there is a threat you're actually making yourself susceptible to that threat so it's very important to remember the power of your mind and what you can do being happy being positive feeling as though there is something you can do that you are stronger than whatever threat is around you this is the stuff that makes the difference between someone catching it and not catching it because you know what it's like people who are constantly fearful of their health tend to attract lots of health conditions when you look at most of the illnesses we have especially autoimmune illnesses they are stress related stress is the biggest killer on our planet today it triggers everything from diabetes from heart attacks from um, anything from lupus you name it it's there okay so we really want to be very very clear about the fact that we want to be factual and we want to look at what we can do and we want to pacify the sympathetic nervous system how do you do that with your breath you slow your out breath down you take deep in breaths and then you slow your out breath down otherwise if you're in a state of fight or flight your breath becomes shallow you're really really alert quick you're not really thinking you're just reacting and then you have to backtrack and see what's actually the damage you have caused right so I wanted to talk a little bit here about what you can actually do to support your physical being to um, be better protected because most of us feel it's all about antibacterial hand washes, you know, it's about these face masks, it's about uh, give, me a, give me some kind of vaccine, give me some kind of drug that's going to help me be better. Well, how about we prevent? So I've got three things here that I wanted to share with you. One is... Um, vitamin C okay so this vitamin C is from Cytoplan and this is basically soluble vitamin C high doses of vitamin C are very very helpful to our immune system again do talk to your health provider do talk to your nutritionist whoever you actually go to but high levels of naturally derived vitamin C are going to be really really good for boosting your immune system overall and for minimizing the effect of fear on your body because fear basically attacks the cells of your body it, it releases in, in it increases the free radicals it does all sorts of things that are not good for you it creates self-attack 
The other thing that you want to be doing is looking at probiotics, okay? So, so many of us have got more unhealthy gut bacteria than healthy gut bacteria, especially if you have taken pharmaceutical drugs repeatedly or antibiotics or you've had operations and you haven't actually recovered from them by taking the right supplements. Now, I have VSL Hash 3 probiotics here that are very, very good quality probiotics and available in the UK and in other countries too. But basically, this is a powdered form that you have to keep in the fridge and it's really good for boosting the good bacteria in your gut. Now the anti to good bacteria in your gut is sugar, is irradiated foods, is alcohol, all the things that are going to increase the bad bacteria in your gut and 80% of your immune system is in your gut and it is linked to your brain. So very important to invest in some good quality probiotics. I will aim to leave you links for these in the text box below so you can check it out. And this is my absolute like ammo, okay? This is called On Guard from doTERRA. There will be other blends with other companies, but this is the one that I use. And you can put this on the soles of your feet so it works systemically to protect all of your immune system. Because it's therapeutic grade, you can also put it in drinks. So I actually have my ceremonial grade cacao and I put a drop of this in as well. So I am energetically and physically protected. This particular oil is said to be able to get rid of all of the like MRSA and all the kind of um, bugs that we have in hospitals that are really, really difficult to clear. So it's very powerful. And if you believe in the power of something, it will have even more power to support you. Okay, so here are more things we can actually do to transmute fear into love and to actually gain the mental clarity we need to move from being a victim into an empowered state. Okay, so I'll go into this in a little bit more detail. So what does it mean to transmute fear into love? It means to raise the frequency. So look at the things that you actually are fearful of and bring love to them. And these are the things that I teach through my YouTube meditations. If you go onto my uh, YouTube channel, rosyglow.com, here, subscribe if you haven't already, please, you will see that I do two monthly co-creation meditations where I follow the new moon and the full moon energies and I teach you how to co-create your reality in, accord in accordance with the current energies okay so at the moment we're transmuting fear raising the vibration by bringing different colored flames to the lower frequencies this is how you make something go from one state into another it's alchemy and it's phenomenal and you can learn to do it through the work that I do um, the mental clarity piece is actually going to come from being able to separate fact from fiction so if you keep coming back to what is it that I'm fearful of here Okay, like ask yourself the question, what are you scared of? And, and look at why you're scared of that. Who's put that in your head, okay? And that's gonna help you again to get clear. Discernment is so important. Like there is lots of information out there. What do you want to focus on? When you see through eyes of fear, all you will ever see is things to be fearful of. When you see through eyes of love, you're actually seeing the fact that things are changing, things are being brought to light, things aren't as bad as people seem, and therefore you can be the voice of reason when everyone else is around you losing their heads. It's that classic thing of the sky's falling down, the sky's falling down, the sky's not falling down, okay? If you look for problems, you will find them. What you focus on grows. So the mental clarity comes from what do I want to put my energy towards because my energy will co-create whatever I focus on. That's how powerful I am. And that is what leads you from victim to empowerment, okay? None of us are here to, to lay down and die and go, woe is me, I need help, save me, okay? We're learning to be empowered beings. We're learning to move from a state where we don't realize why things are happening to us to consciously co-creating our reality. That's what it means to be a divine human walking this earth. It is choosing what you are going to invest in energetically. And that's what I am doing with you now, is giving you a choice of what you are going to invest in energetically. Are you going to spend your life focusing on what you're scared of and all the worst case scenarios that could happen? Or are you going to practice the discipline of moving from that kind of fear-based thinking into what could the best possible outcome be from here? What could be the best outcome from the coronavirus? You know, we could increase um, our level of awareness. We could improve our public health protocols. We could learn to get healthier in ourselves so we're not scared of anything. We could become less reliant on the idea that a vaccine's going to save us and there's an external threat out there that's more powerful than us and we can remember the power we actually have. And instead of being fearful and therefore isolating ourselves and stepping away, we join in with our community and we become stronger rather than creating more separation, which is how any power wants to divide and conquer, it creates fear. 
So, now you know exactly what is going on with the coronavirus. It is designed to spread fear. But what can you do to not be infected by the fear that is all around us? Remember, I've created the Star Salutation Prosperity Practice, which is on my website, and you can gain access to that and improve your overall health, increase your immune system uh, strength to fight anything that you need to fight just by being a beacon of love. Just a reminder, there's a version to suit everybody from beginners to advanced. And once you've actually learned the prosperity practice, you can do it in less than five minutes. So between the tapping and the physical practice, it really doesn't take long and it works really great for money and for love too. To gain free access, please follow the link below. And if you don't know already, I host new moon and full moon co-creation meditations on my YouTube channel every month. So please do subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you always know when I'm live because they are live. And remember that they teach you how to um, be a powerful co-creator of your reality in accordance with the current energies. So if you like this video, please hit the like button and share it with your friends and then we can all be infected with the infinite love virus.